what a response from Lao. They bring this series back to a 1-1 and push us to map three. I'm your host, Ying Su, and I'm back here with Mimi and uh, Valen. I feel like this series, just, this is the series we were owed. This is the one that we deserve, yeah. Valen. They've never played against each other before, and every map is so close. It's peak entertainment. No, it's so close, and Loud had a huge round to start the comeback for them, and it was on the back of Sodhawk with his calling. I wanted to show a round. It was round nine here, and... Uh, it, it was just such a perfect pivot from Sodhawk in the mid round. So what I want to show, just for context, Les got a pick on so he gets to early, and they they anticipated Cena to retake this line based on the positioning of Les, and we see them speed up into this cat hit here after Cena showed himself at B. So the cat hit comes, smokes come out, the nade come out, they're rejoining A main, it's all looking good, but there's a lot of counter util here from Navi, and it's really good. You see the paranoia go back in the garden, uh, counter util from the KO as well, and this is great composure from Sodhawk, and this is what boosted the momentum. We see them pivot back into mid for this B split. And I want to take a pause here because we see them pivoting back into this B split, and I want to show you on the map something key. Toys decided to stay at top mid, and he's a pivotal part of this play because he's going to become a lurker later into the round here. So we speed up into the round. They know that CNET is on B, so they just run him down, full running it down. We cannot give this guy any space. Don't let him get any kills. And they don't even trade. They, they go one for zero on him. And what we see here is toys earlier lurking through mid, being patient. We see uh, fast Navi rotators coming through mid, picks them off. And he, he actually ends up getting both of these kills, and by now the round is really done and dusted. And I really just want to reinstate that. This is on the back of Sodhawk calling that pivot, kind of just slowing the game down. Hey guys, we just got canceled on cat. We don't have to force it through. Slow the round down, go back into your mid to be set up, and that's, that's they won out after this, right? So if this was after the pause, they won out, and it just kind of boosted the momentum forward for the team. And besides calling really well, Sadak was also the best player individually on his team. He was having insane moments to keep them in that one. And for Loud, I think a lot of that great calling came from going back to comfort. This is why I was molding so much when they were trying to experiment with that breach composition, because their mid-round decision-making with this default comp, I think they just understand it so well that even against other teams that are great at ascent like Na'Vi, they're still coming out on top so consistently. Yeah, the crazy thing is normally when Shao is on form, when Sagetsu is on form, when they're just clutching back to back to back to back, back to back rounds, they win. But today that did not happen, Mimi, because the same thing was happening on the side of Loud. Les, Kawa, Aspas, every single one of them stepped up huge. Yeah, I mean, it's ridiculous that this didn't come out because of those clutches you're mentioning. But a big part of that, and I think the player who really propelled that comeback into being is Les, who's been so consistent for this team. I think the comparison between him and Sugetsu is so apt because they're both the players that no matter the situation, no matter what they're applying, no matter what the map is, they're always putting up numbers, winning these late rounds for their team and propelling them into these comebacks as we saw here. Yeah, talking about propelling them into the comebacks, Les was the one who force bought the rifle after getting ecoed and he held down B getting a 3k. Like, you can't ask for more from this player. It, you lose the eco in such a tragic way. How do you even, you do so much chip damage and somehow lose the B bomb site. He says, nope, I'm not losing this game. Buys the rifle on his own and just holds down the site. So he's the one who boosted them into this momentum on defense. And I would say Sodhawk was the one who boosted them in the attack. Yeah, pure confidence there from them. Uh, but for Na'Vi though, we're seeing a little bit of tilt and a little bit of a emotion from them. You know, CNED, Angel, we saw some death slams as well that was going on. Uh, and Mimi, in situations like this, you don't really expect Na'Vi to be a team that get overly emotional. So I'm a little bit surprised with this. Yeah, you were talking at the beginning of the day, Valen, that you didn't think either of these teams would, would really be feeling that pressure, would be would be tilting it all today, because they've been in situations like this so many times. But I think we do see from Na'Vi that there is that pressure on them, that players will get animated at times. And I think that's a good thing you can channel into momentum, but also something that can get the better of you in these high pressure situations, especially going into bind is our third map. Yeah, really, as a player, if you're in a close game, it's very hard to just keep it super stable, right? You're in back and, and forth And it makes it even situation. more impressive that Loud did, despite those right. rounds you're talking about, like losing the eco, being down on your best map. It's impressive that they were able to. Yeah, I think it's because they were just winning so many rounds in a row that regardless of one fluky round, they knew at the back of their mind that they had the grasp on Na'Vi and that they were going to go to map three. I mean, also, Na'Vi, they had to play against this crowd as well. The Loud yeah. fans, once the momentum started uh, to get going, they were really cheering and getting behind uh, their teams, which is also not an easy thing for Na'Vi to go up against as well. Yeah, I know the crowd has been electrifying. I would say you guys got to step up when they're down too, though. You, yeah. you know, <laughs> help them out when they're down, but Loud started 
to win and collect rounds and kind of gain momentum, and the crowd was on their side too, so Navi is facing two opponents, really. Yeah, and with the energy behind them, that I wanted to kind of start to talk about this third map because I have no idea what to expect for Navi. I thought the early stage of this map will look solid for them, especially after winning Pearl. I expected this to be a 2-0 in favor of Navi, but now we go to a bind where this Navi squad, they've tried playing Yor, they've tried playing Neon, they've tried playing Sage Gums. They've just never found something that they truly feel comfortable on. And I honestly have no idea what they're going to bring out today here at Champions, especially with Elimination on the line. I mean, six different times they played this map, five different comps. Like Mimi said, they've been throwing everything into this. And, and Valen, so far, none of it has worked. They're not exactly winning with these uh, ex ex experiments they've been doing. Yeah, right. I mean, for one, it's hard for them to pick a comp, but also for Loud, that's tough to deal with as well. I mean, the head coach has a headache probably up all night <laughs> watching all the different comps that Navi could pull out today. You really don't know what to expect, right? And as a coaching staff, as players, that's kind of tough because there's so many different things you can be thrown at you, so you have to prepare for all of it. And I'm excited to see how Loud is going to deal with that, not knowing what to expect from Navi. Yeah, and for the side of Loud, I am really, really excited to see them play on this map. They were playing this chamber composition with Sadak locking it in, which sounds strange to begin with. You'd normally expect Aspas on that uh. role, but he was so good on it in America. So many creative setups, but it's been a while as well for Loud since they've played this map. So there is a chance that they've come up with something new, that they have changed their composition, as we've already seen on two of the maps in this series. I feel like we've been spoiled there. That didn't look like a I chamber. I was about to say that there was, was not bandages chamber. instead of like, you know, the, the typical chamber thing. But uh, we won't speculate. I mean, we'll carry on speculating uh, without getting spoiled because, uh, like you said, you don't know what to prepare for on the side of Loud. But the issue is the reason that Navi keep changing comps is because they're not winning with whatever it is they're right. trying. So even if it's difficult to prepare for, uh, I feel like Loud still seem like they're going to come out on top on Bind specifically. Yeah, at the end of the day, Navi has never looked like they found their grasp yeah. on this map. So regardless of you don't know what to prepare for, in the back of your mind, you're like, ah, oh, this team hasn't really been good on this map. If we play our if we play our game, if that's their mindset, then they should be able to win this And map. remember the stakes here, right? Navi, they won in Copenhagen. They've taken tournaments before. They were always the second best in EMEA, fighting for more than just that. They've had a tough 2022, but so has Loud. You're back-to-back -back champions, finalists in lock and winners of Americas. To see either of these teams go out this early in champions would honestly be unthinkable, but one of them has to. On map number three here, the pressure is truly on for all of these players. I mean, judging by how map one and map two has gone so far, it's gonna be a close one, you know? We're not really quite uh, finding either team being particularly dominant on either, either of the maps uh, we've seen. So I'm feeling an overtime. I feel like we're kind of We're overtime. bound, right? Two 13-11s yeah, yeah. back to back. It's overtime, 14-12 here, right? Yeah, it has to be. It really does have to be. And for the preparation element as well, I think a lot of this might come down to the on-the-fly calling from these two IGLs. They've honestly both performed so well this series. Angel had one of those games on map number one where he was his calls were on point, his individual performance was electric, and we were just talking about how good good Sadak was on Ascent as well. So the adaptation on the fly in a really big match like this is going to be everything, Valen. And I'm sure you as an IGL who's been in matches like this before knows how difficult that is to pull it off at the level these two guys have been able to do. Yeah, definitely. But I also think it's the battle of the hot starts right now because map number two was going highly in the favor of Navi. But like you talked about adaptation, Loud was able to adapt in live situation down 6-1 and kind of crawl it back together, understand the pacing they have to play at in order to tear down Navi and open up the bomb site. So I think just like in a map like Bind, sometimes the fast pace doesn't work and you have to kind of go back to your slow play, like inserting people into showers, going back into B and then splitting, kind of taking more map control instead of just the fast rushes right away. So it really just depends on how fast you can start and if your quick plays will work. And if not, you have your fallback options of, okay, we got to play slow now. Can we just manipulate and push, push pull the rotations and kind of end somewhere together? I think the good news for Na'Vi is that their star players that are always winning them rounds are on form. We're seeing peak Xiao, peak Sogetsu, they're cold, they're clutching out of their minds. So I feel like, I mean, on map one on Pearl, we saw them get over the line uh, in that fashion. I think they were a little bit unlucky perhaps towards the end on Ascent, not to take it to OT. But if Xiao and Sogetsu are doing what they did on Ascent, on Bind, I don't know. I think it's not going to be as easy as it seems for Loud.
Yeah, I'm also really hoping, talking about players getting into form, to see Osbos in form. It feels like it's been a while since we've seen that Jet in Americas who was just dominating in every sense of the world. He was far and away the best player regionally. He was really the MVP of champions last year, probably a top five player, if not higher than that, at lock-in as well. But it seems like in these last two events, he's struggled to strike that again. And against the CNET, who's actually been so good today, I think that's going to be really important this map. Yeah, real possibility that neither of them played yet on Bind as yeah. well as we head to the Prime Gaming Agent Select. Let's take a look and see uh, if we have any changes from either side, which comps they're going to be moving and bringing to us. And we do have changes. And Na'Vi are going to run the... Triple controller yeah. Omen Brim. I have never seen that one before. I have. Fnatic used to run this back in the days on Bind. They were very, very unsuccessful when they did. <laughs> the ancient era yes. coming back on through. Loud, it seems like they're going to continue to cook in this tournament. Uh, what I think this can bring is you get the paranoia from the Omen. You can have really strong retakes when you're on defense, scaling out with more smoke. What do you make yeah, of this? Yeah, so what I would point out definitely is the Omen pick, especially Sodhawk being on that those other agents like KO and Breach. He's going to be like a pseudo initiator where he has these smokes to make space, but also the paranoia for retakes and getting into the bomb sites. He actually has a lot of tools as like a controller slash initiator mm. player, and I think he's going to be very aggressive on this Omen role. He can also act as kind of a second dive agent, teleporting into his own smokes to help with the entry. It's going to be so cool to see what Loud have cooked up, but Navi on the other side, also double duelists. CNET's back on Neon for elimination at Champions. These comps are going to be insane. Well, this is it. It is do or die. No more second chances. Let's find out which team is going to be progressing to playoffs. Over to you, Doug and Bola. Thank you so much, Shinsu Los Angeles. We've been blessed with a banger here at the Shrine. And the good thing is we still have one map to go. Elimination on the line for both of these teams. And with that, again, the end of the year. There's nothing left. This is it. What a way to go to, to this Neon comp from Navi and then a triple controller comp from Loud. I mean, what is that? I, I, I agree with Sue. I've seen this before, but not in a stakes like this. This is crazy. 10 seconds till the pistol round starts. Let's get this party started. One more map. Shrine, let me hear you. Loud starting off on attack, all attention turned turn towards A. And they're quick with it. And you can already see some impact with this extra smoker here from Sadak throwing up top truck. You get no value if you're playing up there if you zip, zip on. Dude, I mean, look at the site. Nobody can see anything. It's all just green and gray and everything yeah. smoked, everything covered. Tui's finding space in showers, less finding space on site. And Loud finding the round. In a moment where the smoke's fade, they find clarity. A ridiculous clap back after it looked like they were going to fail. When they pushed out that re-push through showers right by bench, they get two kills instantly. And Na'Vi overextend. Tui's with that late lurk through bathroom. At any point, any of these controllers can turn into lurkers. I know. That Valen on the desk was talking about how it's a he could be in some instances a pseudo initiator, and I fully yeah. agree. But at the same time, too, once you get those weird TP plays going, what is going to be the play here? Less with the fast Molly to keep Angel and Shao contained down in Garden, and that forces Angel to TP out. I think the Molly might have missed actually there. Shao got out really easily. Whoa. Oh, and the other one from Sadak is massive. Sipen yeah. <laughs> making a run at this round, though, with the Sheriff. I think with losing CNET and Angel, though, these are the guys who are really doing some work with those light buy rounds that Navi was getting outside of the hero rifle rounds from Sh Sugetsu. I do love how Loud played this 3-1-1 default. Three players going up long, they get that control of Octagon, and then they have... Only two is watching the back of Sand. That's covering Les's flank. And Sadak deep watching bathroom too. It's a perfect anti-eco play. No pushes allowed. Oh, there's, there's a little something. If they managed to get through Aspas with the Phantom though, just overwhelms to get to. 
And that nade hurts. He tried pushing through it to catch a timing, but just not going to be the case. Aspas gets three, is loud, get the second. And Aspas on the raise, too, is something that we've been not seeing too often throughout this season. In some cases, been pigeonholed onto Neon and other things that you definitely wouldn't put to his name prior to this year. No. It's been the same thing for CNET, too. Yeah, in a lot of ways. And that's why you see him playing this Neon right now. There's not really a place for him to be comfortable on this. So they use him for the extra stuns, fast flanks. And, and very quickly, if I may, I know that Aspas just got a bunch of kills, but Les is currently sitting at 4 0. Yeah. The guy's just been on a heater. And look at that one way from Sadak. He can take this right fully here. by himself. Very interesting, given the fact that he was trying to do this when he was playing Chamber on this map. Yeah. At Tokyo. And during the America's Playoff, he gets the trap play. Sprung at him, though. He could TP out of this, no problem. Oh, the Trailblazer, they're hunting. They're pushing him further back. But he just created so much space off of his <laughs> TP that they can't follow. And look at this. They have such an abundance of smokes that Tui's just uses one to put him in it <laughs> if he was in trouble. That's crazy. Oh, Angel. False information there. And they're not following it up with a flash from Shao, so that's a kill on the scene at Gibbon. Freely. Another opener on Aspas, too. Now two away from the showstopper in round three. I mean, they're all lined up in towards short. You've got Angel who's close by, though, cleaning up the first. Kawanzin falls. Aspas waiting for the challenge, and Angel snappy with it. They get the spike down, though. Sadak was the only one who had control of the right side. But they still have the utility of less that they can play off. around. Yeah, Tumali's time is taken away. But they're going to get pushed here very fast. So will he be able to get those off? And will they make a difference? Because I don't see an orb on the spike. Les has to be cautious. He gets the first, tries to snap onto the second angel with three on the round two. He's swinging for it. Not half. Spotting one more. Chow's going to have to pick up the work that was not accomplished. He's gotten it three quarters of the way. He's just going to be able to stick it the whole time. Angel was the protection of 4K as Navi get on the board. And in a moment where they lose advantage early, Loud instantly getting that first pick. Down short with, well, not instantly. It was belabored from Aspas to come through. Yeah. But Angel holds the line. Remember, he was rotating off in that instance. That's huge for Navi to continue to maintain that pace because on ascent, Loud was 17 to 7 in first kills to first deaths. That's outrageous. Yeah, 17 it was, to 7. It was still a 13 to 11. 17 yeah. to 7. That's mad. So in moments like that, you need to see them continue to convert when they lose the man advantage. Because it's frequent, it feels like, at this point. Sadak using both smokes to really creep up on CNED right now. The one way to force him off the angle, and then as well, smoking the front of bathroom so he can just freely walk up. That's a free orb if he wants. And Aspas on the other side of the map too with his showstopper now active. Scout destroyed. It's gonna be really tough to actually activate this trap play that CNET and Na'Vi want to play on Sadak because of the TP. I mean, imagine you try to drop the wall in that situation, but no. Sadak was playing behind it. So you get to feeling some of the pressure. Utility goes instantly back up, and there's CNED. Was patient in showers, find success. The fact that he disrespects the smokes is very important there from CNET too. Using the utility from Shao to help that goal. And that mission, they got one molly out of Sugetsu, but there's still one here, and that's where the spike is, so that's another Thirty seconds eight left. seconds. Fire they won't be able to execute. I don't know that they're going to find much here with Aspas' ult either. Does he dare clear below him? No, he doesn't! Sugetsu drops him from below! They've been trying to help control what's happening in Hookah, and so far, not good. 13 seconds left, though the spike is not in hand. I mean, Tui's is alive, but he can't get to it. Yeah, it's top, top Hookah. No chance at all. And that's massive from Sugetsu there. I don't even know how he hits that. That's a vertical flick on a flying raise with the satchels. It's got to be a disgusting flick. Yeah. Or he's just aiming, pre-aiming up. Yeah. It's really hard to give yourself the space in those instances where you actually control and pre-aim properly. No. Oh, it's what? kind of a messed up satchel there from Aspas. No speed on that. Trying to get the shot fired out on spawn, too. 
losing Sadak there might have been an impact. Maybe they actually needed his smokes. I doubt it. But either way. Because <laughs> they have so many more. This is an eco from Loud now. Shotgun bought up from Calvin Zee. Now Aspas with still a hero rifle. That was saved in the last one, but given to Aspas. How do they manage the disadvantage? Loud with very little to fight back with here, as you were just saying. Ult for less and for twoies. Uh, there's a stun possible at any point with this trailblazer. It's uh -oh. missed, though. That could have been disaster, but they're going to try to crunch. They're going to try to crunch. Angel's going to swing it from door with the utility out. Zenit pushes in with his ult, though. Angel getting it with the ult, too. Meanwhile, they lose control of lamps in front sight, though. So going to potentially give up a spike plan. No, this is spam. Oh, he was not deep enough. That smoke gives so much room there for that to happen. Sadak needs to be a lot more careful. Zenit looking to be more electric with the finger guns and scale up in a position you wouldn't be expecting. Hit still in play. Kalanzin with a Bucky. Going aggressive. I mean, if they can continue to play around the pit, they're going to have a shot at this. Cena tries to punish off the backside. That's another. That's another. Sagetsu's on his own. Seeker's invested. They know he's off with that. He's been so clutch. He's gotten it down to one. And it's the most difficult one to deal with. It's so tough. Once that Viper's Pit goes down inside of Lamps, you have room to work through lamps in the backside. You can worm your way around everywhere. And with that shotgun from Kalanzin blazing the path, Lus has so much room to play off the trade and play backside there, where you really think that he's going to be playing laps off mollies or something else. And remember, that was a light buy there from Loud. Yeah, one rifle. Why did that reaction look so fake? <laughs> With the slow mo and everything. <laughs> Early defensive hit from Navi and the swing out from Angel, wanting to take that fight and finding it. Again, an opener from the leader. You talk about feast or famine. I mean, he's been dining on loud for the last couple of hours. That's interesting, too. Kalanzin was actually doing a good job staying alive as yeah. the initiator. The trap. Whoa. They force and him out, and Angel just TPs, and he's safe with that wall. It's always able to go up from Sugetsu. Yeah, he's out of the play, though, and that's going to allow a lot of room to work. The orbital strike back site to clear things out, and you the one to push CNET into a space where he had to take the fight. Less still falls, but two, he's on the counter. The showstopper came out while CNET was fighting. This is holding space for Zip on there. They've got to be careful. Aspas and Sadak are the only two that remain, and Sugetsu's on the flank. He's got him crunched in, and if he takes long, there is no exit. They have to go forward. Sadak has ult, he could maybe flip the map, but Aspas would be left alone. Zipan, trying to clear back side, Aspas falls. Sadak by himself. So many left. angles to consider, so many things to clear. And just none of them found. Shao coming in from the rear at the end there. The smoke fading. What is that, man? He just had no chance. That's, that's. And this right here, where Sunet is fighting, that's completely giving and holding space for Zipan to come through with that showstopper. And then the smoke from Angel still finding value, even though, remember, he TP'd across the map. Despite losing that light by round from Loud, Navi still in the driving seat. They forced that situation out once again. And Loud are really not having many more ideas than this initial. Default that Sadak has taken actually a lot more space this time against CNED. Neither side changing up the plan at all. No, I mean, we're tied up at three apiece. I get it. Nice flash, though. No real confirmation that the plan doesn't work. CNED, Tokyo drifting around the corner and cleaning up Sadak. No real chance there. It's super interesting that they don't pounce off that flash from Sadak. Because it's perfectly positioned against the Na'Vi players, but they still weren't comfortable about Lance. Another shotgun from Count Zin. Remember, they had Bucky's in this round. Les is upgraded. He's got a Phantom now. Yeah, the big difference, no pit, though. Yeah. Down there was so much value in that ult. You just don't have that resource, do you? Angel on the flank. Once again, a situation where Loud are surrounded. <laughs> well, wait. Just wait. Just whoa, wait whoa. for Angel. I've seen this round before. Never mind. Aspas not going to loop back around. <laughs> Find Ye on the flank. Oh, wait. <laughs> that was 2022, huh? <laughs> 
Aspas manages to get the spike down. A little bit of money in the pockets of Loud. But Navi, again, with a ferocious defense that has proven to cause so many fits to Loud. Yeah, I need to see a timeout here from Loud. Yeah. Start addressing some of the different things that they can do. For example, remember back to that anti-eco that they started with. They got the pistol. They got 3-1-1 control of long. Instead, it's constantly Sadak trying to work up bathroom and them trying to work up short. And I want to see an idea, actually, with this Omen ult. Because it's not one that you see quite frequently on Bind, and there's definitely some ways you can weasel yourself into this. Here's the timeout that I was talking about. And with it comes a momentary pause to collect thoughts, both for the players on the stage and for everyone else watching here and at home. And again, an opportunity to set the stakes. Yep. Elimination on the line for these two storied squads. Yep. This is still group stage. You wouldn't expect it, but it's still group stage. Bro, I thought he was going to just alpha that thing. <laughs> I thought he was just going to neck it. Oh, yeah, there he goes. <laughs> you had the potential to become a legend. Uh, in terms of stakes, though, you're right. We're in the group stage of these two teams who should be fighting for a championship. One of them going to go home after this. One of them's offseason will begin early, and it's a long one. And for the loud players in particular, four out of five of the players in the server right now, contracts are expiring. So what will it look like in the future? And especially with an early round exit, that could change everything. Yeah. Navi as well. It's been struggles this year. It's never looked perfect. It's been a lot of criticism. It's been a lot of cooking. Not quite figuring out how to make this roster work in terms of roles. Finally giving Zipon some leash to play on. And we've swapped up this op. Whoa. CNET's position. Instead of bathroom. He's playing not expect long. this. I'm out of here. Yeah, it looks Are like they spot it now, at least. Do they confirm that he stays, though? Yeah, he does give up the space. Aspas playing on the other side of the smoke. Both duelists with All the timing there. With an attempt at a fight, but it doesn't come true. Sadak is the one still controlling short while everybody else right now. Making sure there's no push out long, making sure Cena doesn't get Here. cheeky with that op, but he swapped up his position still. And Countin comes all the way over just to flash for Sadak. So he can start to throw some smokes out and make it look like it's an A hit. Do they Trailblazer didn't spot anything down long either. The Angel's on an island. Yeah, he's by himself. Yeah. Sadak is doing a great job pulling these rotates. Yep. If Angel gets in trouble here, he's going to TP and leave the site open. Manipulated by mind games. The paranoia out, too. The battle of the IGLs. Shao's the only one not fully believing. Oh, he takes a step back, but he got his. He got the kill. What? Sadak was trying to flip the map. Opportunistic timing from Angel. And a kill gifted. They're still going to try to get out. They're still going to try to get the spike down, but they've got the order strike they have to deal with. They've got the Seekers. Is there going to be a flood, though? 13 seconds left. That Molly denies the flood. They could definitely get this plant unless there's a spam from CNED. But what else do they have? No! Oh, there's no way! That was a millisecond. Angel with three. Aspas holding the line. Last the first one. Snappy. Aspas on the second. So Getsu needs to drop the wall for Angel right now. It's like they're trying to plug holes on a sinking ship by themselves. Each wall bleeding further and further as Les gets it to a 1v2 and it's too much. Thank you. Navi on this defensive side. I know I've said this a lot, but they have a great hold on the game right now. They just can't repeat mistakes from the last two maps. Let it slip even an inch. It's real, I mean, this, oh no, he was ulting away. I mean, it was a gift, bro. That is so unlucky for Sadak. It literally the freest kill of his life. The culmination of the fake, and it could have been a perfect concert wait. Look at his possible aggression here, CNET's. Coming in as well, he's gonna hold the long Shadows angle while Angel was considering peeking with Shao's flash. I thought he was going to. The Trailblazer again, that one way Cena has to give the space up. Yeah. He can play it from a lot deeper, but 
We also have this Aspas ult that we need to consider. It wasn't successful last time. And it seems like they're going to try to do a bit of the same from the last time they had that ult. A pop out from Hookah. That flash, Angel's overwhelmed. That's beautiful. He's playing in front of the wall too, so... No real room for him to play other than maybe his smoke, his molly. Doesn't get that opportunity though. No. Shao and CNED both here. Op in the hands of CNED. Look at this re-clear, Shao. One, one point away from having his ult online as Shao goes exploring. Toxins going up. This is just not able to expect after you've already done pressure in this position. They've given up the space. Do they expect it though? That flash clears Uka backside, left swinging. It went in between his legs. Less than Aspas pounce. seconds left. Planted. Every time you think that Navi have some way to swing this round and this game, Loud responds so fast. And they're already in positions to save. <laughs> yeah. Zip on, he's in spawn. There's no chance. Some damage done would be good, though. The bank for Navi, not great, but still acceptable for a couple more buys. Meanwhile, Loud, I mean, saving all of the weapons when they forced up in this in a big way. <laughs> nice double peak, yeah, bro. bro. What are you going to do against that? <laughs> Uh, that's at the end of the round, too. Yeah. They have that focus. Yep. They're ready for it. That's as the spike is blowing up, they're coming up with a dynamic peak. How does a shot miss, bro? That is between. I mean, that's lit. I mean, oh, he legged him at least. That's crazy. The thinnest of margins separating these two squads. It really has felt like a heavyweight fight from beginning to end. Shadows. More aggression here from Loud into bathrooms, but it's not just Zadok, it's four members. You gotta be careful here. Does CNET, I mean, he has his ult. He's just picked like this up. Yeah. Feeling some of the pressure, orbital strike online. Yeah, we've seen him dive on that bathroom's push before, but I think he understands there's more to it than this. And also trying to rely on Zippon's elevated position with the satchel. Meanwhile, look at how loud or weathering this. They're already looking at the teleporter, considering the possibility of a crunch. It's funny because most of the time it's them forcing Angel out into that teleporter. Two ults invested. Oh, oh Spas finding one onto Zippon. That could have been two, two. They still haven't established U-Haul control, though. Yeah, but just mauling them off. They've got them contained. Aspas going to go for it. He, is he aware of the second? Yeah, the pre-fire, but I guess he wins the duel out anyway. Les couldn't join in. They couldn't pinch him. But they maintain control. Satisfied with what they have. Les drops the pits of security even further. But Angel pushing forward. Walking into his death as Les snaps on to three. And the loud crowd goes nuts. He is like a shark. And there's blood in his pit. He's got a bite to it. That's twice now he gets his pit down on the safe side. That's twice now that it leads to a round win from Loud. Can't believe we're all tied up, man. This is just unbelievable between these two teams. And another timeout. This time on the side of Navi. Can you believe this is a group stage game? I swear this would have been like a lower <laughs> bracket something later yeah. on in the tournament. This group is deadly. And this is its conclusion. We can finally say it is its conclusion. This is the last map, last opportunity for either of these teams to advance or go home. The last map we'll see. One of these guys, I don't know who. I can't wait to find out. Right now, Loud finally have broken the economy of Navi. As we get back into this, you see the buy. A judge from Angel.
Two rifles purchased and sheriffs on the rest. Now they will allow a buy the next round, and these light buy rounds have been incredibly, incredibly dangerous. I have lost count of how many thrifties and light buy situations have proven to be successful. It's funny, I feel like we've had less thrifties than expected, even though we're seeing yeah. constantly <laughs> eco round wins. Ooh, a big oh. flash on the swing. That's really nice there. You think you're getting ahead of the flash, it goes a little deeper. You're looking for a peek. Granted, CNET did have one of those rifles, so that's a big pickup. Sadak, he's been the lurker all game. IGL versus IGL, Judge in the hands of Angel. It's a brutal angle, is he aware? Surely he waits for his team when they're approaching. Oh, Angel just heard them. They made footsteps there. And the Trailblazer's gonna confirm. He's in trouble. Angel looking to try to find a threat to pull on. Yeah, look at that as well. Sada yeah. trying to flash off the... Ooh. He's overwhelmed, but he's playing inside of the smoke. Remember, he still has a judge, and from that distance, nothing is dealt. And that smoke, way too obvious what's going on, especially once you yeah. hear him jump out of hookah. Yeah, yeah, planted. Yeah. And now, Sada actually has this flash to secure the round. You can just flash out hookah when they run out if he wants. He might just mow him down by himself. He's already dealt with the duelist. They don't need it anymore. Nope. A flood attempt quickly stems. Toxins going up. So you get to with a nice one on with the Sheriff on to looking for the second. A little bit of damage dealt, 35 HP amongst the two remaining members and it very quickly dissipates. And Loud have an opportunity to do what they've not been able to do all series long, win a half. Here on Bind, a lot closer in terms of sidedness than either of the maps we've played. But it has been slightly skewed in one direction. Let's go. Loud subverting that as well. There are two ops. Yeah, exactly the same way that Ascent's half ended. Remember, they bought up ops in that last round because they have weapons sitting near. Yeah. Keep a close eye on it. Who swaps over and when. Plus, even has a backup judge here, which he might get to use wait, right wait. now. Angel's so far up. He's so far up. Abusing the wall that was put before him, he tries to take some space and get a kill and can't. Yeah, stimming away. That is, a, that is a classic Angel play, isn't it? <laughs> and they've swapped the Lurk to Tui's in this case. Down bathroom, he had massive success in other rounds. But that off. Pushed off the angle, the second one falls. Last and Aspas with openers towards A. Zipan surrounded and aided at his feet. The Molly too, the floor is lava, got the satchel away. See Ned looking for it with the ult. He's not gonna find any value either. Yeah, Sadak with a nice way to TP across the Way where CNET is holding, easily forces a crossfire from Loud. Up. Still chances. Albeit slight, but they are there. You're absolutely right. And Tui's might get lurked on here, where he just re-lurked through. Oh no, what is this name? That's gonna hurt. Is it gonna kill him? It forces out the swing, he gets the kill. But no real idea that there's someone else there. And Tui's has walked all the way through Lamp, so now they should know what's going on. He's either close bath or down short. sugetsu has been so clutch. A 1v2 clutch in a situation like this, no. And for the first time in the series, you're right. Loud enter halftime with a lead. Switching sides. It's been so close every other time. 8-4 on Pearl for Na'Vi. And then it was tie game on a set. Where Loud came back in a massive manner here. They're in control for the first time heading into the second half. And I'm sure you guys are getting tired of us talking about him. Les has 18 kills at halftime. I mean, the guy is looking to close the series out by himself. How do you deal with the player that dynamic? That's the question that Navi have to answer with one half left. We'll throw it over to the analyst test to see if they can answer that question themselves. 
Doug, I would never get tired of you talking about Les because he deserves the spotlight. Now, let's talk about the loud comp. They pulled out a triple controller. Uh, Mimi, Vanna, what did you make of it on, uh, on the first half? I thought it was actually pretty solid. They're using the one ways to really simplify what angles they have to do with on their executes uh, to deal with, that is. And also, when they're going for extremity control, it's really good to put these one ways up and make it easier to gain that space. Yeah, it's a very self-sufficient agent, the Omen, because he's allowed to one way showers and kind of work his way slowly with his paranoia as well to kind of keep that control. And also towards long B, he's one waying the octagon, so it kind of lets his teammates uh, scoot up for free. And then to end the extremity control, he has his paranoia. So that's why we see him going hookah a lot. He can flex his paranoia into octagon or into sight. He has a lot of options. And I think, like I was saying earlier about the pseudo initiator, he really is that because he's gaining space for his team and having that paranoia to end it and get kills is very important. And I think that's going to continue onto their defensive side now for Loud, where there are also a lot of good opportunities to take that extremity control with these one ways but it's going to be really interesting to see it clash with this neon comp because i think that's going to be a big goal of navi as well and i feel like there's a chance we often see this neon pushing through taking fights past that utility from the omen one ways. and this is going to be potentially the last half of one of these teams that we see and what how poetic it is for a team like loud they started the year wanting to innovate finding their own identity and they could potentially end the year on this comp how crazy is that yeah i mean like you just said it was it's kind of coming full, full circle right because they started the year off coming with the harbor viper innovating new stuff and now they're innovating a triple controller comp onto bind and we got to see if it's going to end or if it's going to keep going yeah elimination is on the line here i can't wait to see who's going to come out on top let's send it back to doug and bala for the second half thank you so much Jinsu. yeah one one half really all it is one half to decide who year is done who advances to playoffs and who continues this run Loud with the two round lead now on defense that double controller comp you imagine will be stronger on this side of things but we'll see how it plays out. Navi have been in a similar situation very recently not getting out of groups at Tokyo was the first time at a global event. But they didn't manage that. And they're starting slow here. Yeah, they are cautious with it. Trying to reckon with that fact. This wall is very old. Blocks off lamps, blocks off spawn. And allows you to take some backside control. From Sugetsu, let's see what they do. Sinet has one stun. Oh, they've smoked so much. Oh my gosh. How is he aware? He was just so aggressive. But what you're right, Tui's was ready. It's a great path, but Tui's... I mean, contains and maintains control of the back of sight. Ains is going to try to dive in it and gets punished. Loud, full control on this retake. They may not give up a single inch here. Only a few members to take damage, really just Sadak. And he's the first one on the fight with Cenid on the other side. Aspas falls. Cenid with reposition. No. Clothesline dropped. They're overwhelmed. Loud pushing back, and Xiao cannot hold. And already on the pistol round, you see some extra value out of this composition that Loud has pulled out. Tuis is able to do all of that, stay inside of lamps. A lot of times the Brimstone has to run off so that he can make sure he stays with his smokes for the post plant. In this case, gun out, fighting the entire time. Sadak covers in with that space. Gets two smokes down that allows them to flood into the back of sight and counteract exactly what Na'Vi wants to achieve in that one. Three round lead for Loud. They've won the last five rounds in a row if you go back to the previous half. Talk about having control of the situation. Navi on a light buy, but we've talked about it many times this series. They're good here, they're comfortable here. They've made a whole lot of something out of nothing in situations like this before. And that was almost one. I mean, a pixel, the only difference there. Smoke to cover from distance. They don't realize Angel is through, though. Unless they go for a reclay, that's probably not going to be a factor. Oh, the elbow gave him away initially, and that double peek from CNED was perfect. In fact, it is a factor. You're right, that double peek is so strong. Angel giving his elbow first means that he has to flick for that angle. And CNED comes on the more traditional one. Whew. Sakura's got to be careful. He's just, he has the opportunity to walk back to Lamps there. 
That's twice. He's kind of lackadaisically walking across an angle. They're making something out of this. Navi have gotten two, but the hard work still left to do. Two is with three. Avoiding disaster. Surely what that would have been. But they're not out of the woodworks yet. Navi have gotten the spike down, and they've both upgraded weapons. Osboss is so slow here to be able to help out less. It's equal footing, a Spectre and a Bulldog on each side. Seeing it healthy, Sugetsu not nearly as fortunate. But that hasn't mattered in the past. Will it matter here? The Roomba detecting the first. Onus on Lao to reestablish control. The nade to provide some cover, and they double swing into it. Osboss saves it. After Sugetsu gets it down to a 1v1. Whew. He was just saying these rounds get real spicy. But what the heck was that from Tui's? You thought it was whiffed? You thought it was over. You thought that that round was going to be lost because he couldn't hit the first shot, and then he hits three kills. Look at that. One, two, three, four. The fifth burst is what it took. Loki, I didn't know there was that many bursts in a bulldog. Yeah, I don't think I did either. <laughs> As the saying goes, fifth time's a charm, and that was enough to get them the round. Magic like that is what it's going to require to close out this game, though. Fast push down. Aspas against Sugetsu. There's nobody else to fight. Are there reinforcements? Will they help? He's stuck. Zippin just picked up the spike. They're coming to take the fight. Navi's pushing into this. How do Loud lose two there? Well handled by Sugetsu, who again was by himself. And it goes from bad to worse. Less going for a reclear. And we're 20 seconds into the round, and it was basically wrapped up. This bonus attempt, out aloud, definitely hurt from that last round. Remember, only one player survived, so that's why they try to go for something crazy. Yeah. And it could have worked. I mean, Sugetsu was isolated, but ultimately. I dropped the spike. Now he capitalized with mass. I mean, Sugetsu's been playing so well. Yeah, he has. Talk about singing the praises of specific players here. He did. I honestly think everybody's stepping up. And what started as kind of a sloppy game in the beginning has turned into a really beautiful game of Valorant on bind here. Remember back to Pearl, those were such slow <laughs> rounds. Really draining, you thought it might be a stomp, and then, man, have we upgraded. I mean, we're, that's, that feels like a different series at this point. <laughs> well, we get a chance to check out the, the skin that Tui <laughs> chooses to play with. Is that the topic you choose? I mean, we've got plenty of time. <laughs> we've got plenty of time. Nine to six. Talk about pressure on Navi right now. They're finally the ones who have to try to come back in this game. Look at this from Sugetsu. I mean, him against the world. It's such a good angle. There's not really extra space there to move past. No. It's really him who has the onus to peek. Because they're kind of put their backs against that wall. So Navi converted, and they're going to try maybe to go fast here. Same thing. There. With Sadek a fake TP, which puts Aspas in a position to opt this. Yeah, but he has, he has light armor on this. Or he has no armor, excuse me. It's a glass cannon. He's going to have to satchel out. He was too aggressive. He was too bold with it. And Navi punish. Pounce as they find the best target they possibly could. And CNET scaling forward. He's taken over the site. He's taken over the round. And he's far from done. Kawanzin by himself, feeling some of the pressure. Deals with the first in another situation where Lao desperately try to hang on to the only weapon that they have. <laughs> what do you think of this skin? Yeah, I, I, okay, <laughs> I, pr I prefer the Prelude to Chaos, but that's just me. This is ridiculous. Counter punch after counter punch. And what looked like, now Lao could have gotten up to 10. Yeah. On that bonus. It was a very bold play. Oh, and now, 
Kalantin holding on the last gun, which would be carried over in a very crucial way where we've seen hero rifles be so impactful. No volley! It just misses. Just barely, and the spam on the angle does not connect. Trying to keep hope alive here is the crowd for loud. And the thing is, now V have broken their economy ever so slightly. So the staying power here is starting to falter. And there's some key things as well that you're looking at with CNET in that last round, for example, getting deep with that wall that we pointed out early. It's very unconventional. It doesn't give you that lurk access, or at least the same level of it, but it does allow you to flip that site. And that's what CNET did against Sadok back site there. Comfort for Navi. As you wouldn't think, they're down two rounds, given how this half is gone. They've got full rifles. They've got money for days. They have two ults they can work with to get to. And Angel are so close to getting theirs on two. I mean, this very quickly could become an avalanche. It overwhelms loud. But Navi concerned about what might be on the other side are playing this a bit more precariously. A bit more cautiously, a bit more safely. Spike drop. A lot of control gained over towards the B site. So they're comfortable to back off. I've got your trail. Seekers popped. This way. Loud as numbers here. Good flash from Sada. Very nice. They disrespected those zip bumps through. They're even getting the plant down. I mean, they're going to try to push their way out from this. They're going to try to establish some presence on the site and try to get out ahead of things. 30 seconds left. Navi can flip the map, though, if they want, because they pause for just a moment. Sonic finding one. They've invested the orbital strike two to try to get another kill. Seen it's ult. They've jumped everything into this. Concerned about the danger of rounds like this. And they manage it well. And I have to say, CNET is getting very comfortable on this Neon. Yes, he is. They've tried it so many times on various different maps. Lotus, Bind. And now it looks good at the perfect time. A dueling chorus of chants, cacophonous at that. <laughs> we need something to take up. What's well, been quiet from loud in the last three. Let's just wait in to go down me. No, yeah. Oh. Just goes down to Spike. For full money in the next. And it's down to one, Doug. All of a sudden, the canceled bonus from Navi. You're seeing the implications of that now. Yep. Is it really a surprise, though? And you think about the series and the way that it's gone. <laughs> For us to find ourselves in this situation, loud hanging on desperately, white knuckling as they try to hang on to this lead. And Navi, with a wild comeback, they've won the last three. They're pushing loud. Aspas with his ult in this. He's posted up in side of showers. Blinded. And Navi, I mean, we saw it a lot on Ascent, deathballing their way to control in this B area. When are Loud going to be able to respond to that? They just walked through the orb. Oh, the flash wasn't deep enough. But Cohen's in and he's stuck now, though. Utility out. Can he try to find a way? He gets the first. It the was name. free. Last on the swing. Angel's dead. And with that goes to Spike. Aspas looking for one with the ult. He tried to get high ground. But it's Les who stabilizes. What a shutdown. Angel tries to go through the orb, but that was ill-advised. Molly comes through. Aspas is there in time with a nade. Everybody vulnerable. Of course, it's Les. And Les destroys them. Who else? He was struggling to get up to 20 in the second half when he got, like, what, 18. And then all of a sudden, big 4K from who has really felt like he's turned into a a leader for this team. All the talk of him doing a lot of IGLing, mid round and calling. Dealing with the map vetoes, those sort of responsibilities fall on what ended up being the champion's final MVP last year when they won and he took down that trophy.
got so many ults that they can work with here. You just see Les using his ult Scout right off the back. Oh. He's still with Seekers. He, he did with the Oppo. He spotted both with that Trailblazer, both Aspas oh and Kalinster and Sadak. And even when there's two players up top, trucks who gets who wants to take the fight. That's just absurd. And Sadak has been struggling to stay alive in these early instances. Look at the wall they're throwing, too. Less from the other site. Yeah. Front lamps, front sight, but nothing more than that. Showers control has to be established here if Navi want to feel more comfortable with this. Well, it's the same thing for Loud, too. Ooh. So uh, Could have gone around the corner, spotted Angel, and then all of a sudden there's a nade at your feet. Yeah. To They're going to try to hang on. Angel's timing on this is going to be everything. Attack side pit used. And the Seekers to counter, but... There's really nothing that they can do to pounce behind this. Oh, what are those things doing? It's just Aspas on the site by himself. There's help from Kawanzin. Yeah, sure. There's help from Tui, sure, and that's the biggest one. Sugetsu's way close here. Angel dealt with. The pit could be everything. A snap from Sugetsu is clean. If he fell there, that round opens up for Loud. I mean, it very well still may. They're down in numbers, though, and Tui's is weak. Less repositioning and joining in on the fun. Flash is there. You see some of the spam through the pit. Dropped the pit. They dropped it. Wasn't covering the spike. They want to take the fight straight up. And that seems to have been the best possible decision. Unlock Zipan to get two. Two East Falls. Navi get another. Only a brief moment for Loud to hang on to this lead, but it's back within one. Of course it is. And again, this pick from Sugetsu on the Sadak is just crazy to me, given the fact that we had Aspas up top there as well. But the Trailblazer spotted both, so they both tried to fall off. Sadak not all the way. Could have been a cool play, but... Yes, of course it can! <laughs> there you go. Oh, aggression again? Every time this early bathroom fight happens. It feels like it favors the attacker. You saw Loud run a very similar play. And again, it was when the buy was light. Yep. It's just pistols. Navi just seems so ready for that tr for that attempt at surprise. And they've swapped up the wall here from Sugetsu too, so Lurk ability much, much easier to achieve here. Ward positioned as well. I mean, Navi have done such a good job of deflating loud. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of it comes down to the economy, though. I mean, how many times have we seen them hold on to scraps? Yeah. Oh. And sometimes scraps is all you need, though. The stun, the little damage done with the spam keeps him in. That's one. The stun, though, I, man, I thought, I thought for just a moment. But there's really no shot here. I mean, Navi are putting themselves in a position now where they're going to be tied up at 10. They still have so much money to work with. Yep. And they're starting to really cycle these ults up as well. Whereas loud in some of these instances, it looks like the goal is some of these orb controls. <laughs> Either way. CNET's hunting from the backside here. It's not that important to get this kill, but... Oh, well, I mean, when, give him anything. Yeah, when you think about ults being cycled for Navi, any sort of advantage, especially when Loud's on the Wait, other side. Is there a knife here? Give you me a knife. Is what give matters. Me a knife. No knife, but the <laughs> tenth for Navi. And again, I, I have to go back to just how well Navi have done at deflating Loud. Mm. I mean, they've taken all the momentum out of the game. They've taken the air out of the arena. Yep. I, they have full control right now. And with that comes a timeout for Loud. We'll take a look at just a moment. I'm pretty sure that's the last one they have. Yep, Navi with one more two. And it is the last one for Loud. And there's letting this lead slip that they, I mean, again, they won that first half. For the first time all series, mind yep. you. And then they win the pistol, they win the anti-eco. It's not clean. And ever since then, it's been free fall. Just one round outside of those. And Navi has been stomping on this attack. 
And these timeouts are when the thoughts really simmer. Yes, you're trying your best to come up and make sure you're focused on the ideas at hand. But within that too comes the doubt. It creeps back up. Are they closers? Or is it Navi? Who have let go of the pressure, let go of that thought that they might be the ones going home in Group D. Echoes of Tokyo are slipping away for them. And instead, chants from the Shrine and thoughts of playoffs instead. The judge for Sadak. All rifles, all for Zipan as well. Blinded. Shout the Seekers a little bit of early info gather from Loud, but Navi happy to give some of that away. Silence on the map. And tension just mounts and mounts. No challenge down bathroom, no challenge anywhere. In fact, look at Loud's position. Playing delay here on B and playing back behind the Viper wall on A. Not even. Worried about peeking, worried about getting early information. They're giving it up and playing for retake. Sadak with the judge too. Well, and they've got to be careful on this because if a retake is the attempt, you've got a couple of players playing too close. This isn't working out for Navi. They're kind of stunning themselves, but... Sonic arrived. I've Did he just ult I think he just ulted in, yeah. He ulted into the smoke. With the judge. Les still trying to hold him back as Les gets two. Sonic with another upgraded weapon. Success found. Shao left alone as Les gets three. The lead again for Loud. And it's just genius for the mastermind of Brazil. Sadak ults into the smoke past CNET. CNET realizes what happened. And he gets one pump in the face. Jeez, man. I mean, what a gift, bro. I swear, Fraud is doing more from backstage in the coach's booth than the players are on stage to hype up the crowd. Realizing the situation at hand, they're full focused on the game right now. And now, be all of a sudden, there's some shakiness here. Some very fast plays coming out on both sides of the map, but also feels like Sugetsu firing through that smoke. They're desperate to just find something. I think Sada's going to play with the judge the rest of the game here, guys. He found so much success with it previously, sure. You think about how money's handled, too. It allows him a little bit more room to be able to buy for his teammates. Well, and just think about how many smokes are on the map on this defense. Yeah, exactly. It's actually really smart. And how frustrating it could be to face a judge. But I think on the other side, we have to consider that Navi have handled that so well up until this point. Yeah. And most of the time, choosing the right site. So yeah. if he doesn't have that tool to... TP back into the front. Ooh, Count Zine. Taking a little damage. Very risky to just right run here. up jump spot like that. It seems like they're expecting to flood out from Hookah, and they may be right. That smoke, the Molly at its feet. They're going to try to flood out onto the site if they can, but it's a bit labored. Three players there. Now it starts to flow, and they've managed to get openings. They've managed to get the space that they're looking for. It's seen it gets two. And there's not even a gun here for Sadak to pick up through the TP because they weren't challenging this space. Again, playing for delay. Really look to Aspas here. Cool. CNET spotted, no utility to help clear him out. The flashes he gets across, CNET staying alive. Ooh. Sadak wanting to make a play. Remember, he's got a judge, he's got smoke in his feet. He can tuck into, actually spams in it onto Angel. Reposition, weapon, grabbed. It's only CNET, a 1v1, and Sadak wins it out! Leading from the front, loud series point. Two in a row for Sadak. And it's all him. All loud, all day here. How does he manage to do that? Angel saw his foot and then got led to the face.
Just crazy how clutch this man is right now. And they got to transition from screaming to strategy, to calm, to focus on what they're about to do. After losing that one, after being the first to be threatened with elimination, to now move forward here and move on to playoffs. Babala, this is often the most difficult one to hit. When you think about it, you know, I've alluded to it a little bit, but it feels like two fighters who have gone now 15 rounds, who are both exhausted, yep. who've reached the depths of their playbooks and are just looking for a little extra, whatever's left in the tank, to deliver a knockout blow. And Loud find themselves with a slight advantage. And it all comes down to what's left there, what's left in the tank. Is there enough juice to pull this off, to put Navi away? Right Think here. about how questions abounded, doubts, on their performance, on their form. Questions about the future right for Loud. Who will stay, who will go? All of that weighing heavy as they emerge from their corners for what could be the very last time. Oh, Navi threw that smoke. CNET has been leading the charge. He's been the guy keeping them in this game. He needs help to keep this season alive. A season that slipped for Navi from promises and promising paths to becoming champions to now here. And there's no success with that boom bot that's intended to try to get some value out of clearing hookah. The one thing it's done, it's kept Sadak alone here. Aspas is not rotating back towards A. Trailblazer down, clear sand, the rotate's gonna come in, loud. Know what's happening, 40 seconds. Still a possibility of pivoting. And we have mirrored ults here. Tui's can delay if he wants. Spike planted. But he opts not to. Zipan on the plant, the ult still in hand. Is Navi punching back? They've gotten a couple of jabs. And that cross might just be enough. Unless Kalanzin can counter, no. Tui's left by himself. And it's a prime gaming flawless for Navi. Absolutely right about how difficult this is right there. That one decision. Tui's not ulting, thinking Navi is going to just tap the spike. So he tries to delay for longer. Instead, Navi just stick it. Didn't want to induce a TP. What a fight. And this is it. Final round of regulation. Will it be a bell ringing Monty for Navi? Or will we be going to overtime for another round? Judge bought up two judges here. The econ is not great, no. but a lot of ults to make up for that. One of them already invested, less is Pitt, attempting to control A, and he is one of the ones with the judge. Fast bathroom control too. You need Aspas to stay here. You need him to maintain control. Otherwise, that pick gets pinched. Blinded. And with that, Les is likely dealt with. I mean, if you're Navi here, you just want to draw up some of those ults, right? Get them out so you don't have to deal with them later. That boom bot broken by Cowan Zine there. So Zadok's position still unknown. But they're backing off anyways. They want to use this opportunity to go for this pinch. Oh, and Aspas has a big shutdown in that ult. That dog was not deep enough. So they're going to re-aggress Naviar and pull out and take the space. Aspas, trigger aching for the touch. And it's just a bit off. He's going to ult. He's going to go forward. Oh, he gets seen in. They're pivoting back to B. Sadak with the judge and the second kill found. Is he going to try to ult out? Yeah, he's going to safety. He's going to elbow. Oh! with so much to do and all they can do is watch as the clock ticks away the bell inevitably ringing
but they managed to get the spike down. Shell 1v4, no! We've had the thrill in Manila, the rumble in the jungle, the slugfest in the shrine goes the way of Loud! And the season ends for Navi. Loud continue on the playoffs. But the conclusion of the group of death ends on a sad, sour note for Navi, who had a promising campaign towards the championship early on in the year, but it ends with a bow and an exit from the group of death. What a match. Loud greet the fans, the crowd is victors. After one hell of a fight, both teams pushed to their absolute max. And a freaking gift. <laughs> for everyone watching. <laughs> I mean, that series delivered. That was awesome. Oh, what do you even say? I mean, the Loud, again, the questions abounded for them. Yep. Will they return to form? Yep. Who is this Loud squad that we knew that we were expecting? Where have they gone? Yep. And on the other side for Navi too, what's it gonna be? Loud walk away victorious. And it's on the desk to break down that series. Yinsu, take it away. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. Another 13-11, and loud they have made it out of Group of Death, and they will get a chance to defend their title. I've got Mimi and Valen back here with me. Uh, those two have already said it, you know, the casters. What a series that was, Mimi. It truly delivered. And what a way for Loud to recover. They start the year innovating, pulling out Harbor Viper. The rest of the world copies them, and then they start slipping. They bomb out of Tokyo, and now it looks like there's another Champions run beginning. I I can't help but think back to last year where they bombed out of Copenhagen and had a tough group stage in Champions and went on to win that event. This finally looks like a loud that is back in form. Yeah, and to add, because the game was so close, you really had to pull out different kind of strategy with that new composition. So all that tells me is that they were very prepped on this. They've been working on this for a long time. And regardless of the back and forth, they always had an answer for what Navi was going to throw at them. What an exciting match. And it had to go that close, right? After the first two, it had to be a treat. It had to be. And, and the play players are in such great form. Les in particular was astounding this series. I think without his performance, there's no way that Loud could have gotten this one over the line, but they are playoff bound. And I'm so excited to see what else they've cooked up because I was doubtful of what this triple controller composition could bring, but I actually thought they played it so well on the attack side in particular, the way they manipulated rotations, held on to extremity control with that and really used it to simplify their executes. It's clear that this Loud team, no matter how people may critique their ideas, they're always going to commit to something new, adapt and come out with something that can succeed at the highest level. We do have to say goodbye to Na'Vi though, but this is the thing, on a different day, maybe it would have been Na'Vi that's going through every sure. single map that came down to the wire. It is a little bit sad to see them go out of groups, but it was a group of death for a reason. Yeah, and I think a big credit is to Les, right? He popped off, he almost had 30 kills for the team, really anchoring down that B site, giving no entry for Na'Vi. And if it wasn't for an individual performance like that, it could have definitely yeah. gone the other way at such a tight series, right? So I think when teams are so neck and neck on the strategy wise, it really comes down to who's in better form, who's going to step up at the table. And today it was less and congratulations to Loud for making the playoffs. But a tragic run for Na'Vi. They were so excited. We were so excited to see what this team could bring out this year. And they always brought it close, but it was never enough at these global events. And it will be interesting to see what next year brings for them. Just a, a, tr a tragic way to go out, honestly. Yeah, I mean, we've spoken a little bit about the uh, innovation behind Loud. So let's send it down to the mastermind, the captain, the IGL, Sarak, who is standing by with Dryad in the post, uh, Verizon post-match interview. The 2022 champions live another day and make it to playoffs right here. As always, I'm joined by Sarak. Everybody give it up for Sarak. With a very close series against Navi. And my first question for you is, 
you have made it to six international events. The core of Navi also made it to all those events and qualified for those events, but it's the first time that you two face each other. What were your expectations for this match? Uh, we knew it's going to be a really hard match for sure. They're, those guys are amazing, really talented. So yeah, it was expected to be really hard for sure. And one of the things that you've also talked about is since that Masters Tokyo, the team was really working on the mental, making sure everybody was in that right place, right time. And for today, when it's a match that is this close, 13-11 in every single one, what are some of the things that you started applying to make sure that it went your way? Well, for sure, we we didn't give up and at the moment. Like, even though in, in Perth we didn't manage to, to close it out, I think it was really close, and that's thanks to the all the psychological job we've been doing. Uh, so I'm really happy for that, and I'm really happy that we show all that we've been working to, uh, and bring here. One of the things that you've been working on is that triple controller that we got to see in Vine. Can you, can you tell me about that? How did that come to be? Uh, I mean... I miss Chamber for sure. Chamber, I'm so sorry, Chamber. But I, Omen is, is useful in, in other ways, so we thought it was gonna be even better for, for this kind of matchup, so yeah. Okay, and I got one more question for you. Every single time that we have one of these interviews, everybody says who they wanna face, who, who's gonna be that one team in playoffs that they wanna go against. For you, who is that one team? Uh, bring anyone. <laughs> I'm just kidding, yeah, no, no. Whatever, whatever we play against, it's gonna be fine for us, for sure. Okay, okay, we're excited to see what's gonna happen in playoffs for Loud. Thank you so much, Shadok, for the interview. We're gonna send it back to you guys. Just one best of three is standing in the way of playoffs, but there could only be one for the other. Between Loud and Na'Vi, it's going to be absolute heart breaks by the end of today. I feel like this could be one of the most important games in all of these players' lives. The spike planted, you see if there's any utility that's going to dump up on top of it. Zipon's going to get cleaned up, Kalantin gets both. How do Navi find a way out from this? As it seems like Angel's gonna be the late lurk, but Les is ready for it. Maybe off the stun, maybe off a kill. Yeah, Angel with four, Zipan gets the last. Oh, Nightfall dropped, it's gonna hit what? One, two? Two members of Loud already down. Navi, oh my gosh, they just got obliterated. Navi somehow maintain control and take map one. The rest of Loud toward today. Aspas is already out on site. He's gonna have to turn that flash. They know where he is. If it cleans him up, and it's once again a slaughter. Les is gonna do it on his own, isn't he? Meanwhile, Aspas joining in on it. Less than two on the round, the third around the wall. And yet again, Navi crumbles. I'm looking for the timing of these no commands and the lockdown, Sadak up close. He might have just ended the round right here without using anything. Look at him go. Sadak with four. We turn attention to bind. But Angel pushing forward, walking into his death as Les snaps on to three and the loud crowd goes nuts. Navi have gotten two. But the hard work still left to do. Two is with three. Onus on Lau to reestablish control. The nade to provide some cover, and they double swing into it. Aspa saves it. The best target they possibly could. And CNET scaling forward. He's taking over the site. He's taking over the round. Nice, guys. He's insane. He's insane. Good entry. The ultimate to the smoke. With the judge. Les still trying to hold him back as Les gets two. Shao left alone as Les gets three. The lead again for Loud. We 